Another day, another Draymond Green suspension. What's poppin', y'all? Welcome back to the PBD Plug channel. Before we dive in on today's topic, I just want to remind everybody at home, make sure you hit that like button for me. And if you're new and you enjoy this type of content, make sure you subscribe. I want to start off with a round of applause for the NBA. I think the NBA is handling this Draymond Green situation correctly. Um, this is rare and indefinite suspension. For those of y'all who don't know, a couple nights ago, Draymond Green struck another player, Yusuf Nurkic. And after the game, he got up there at the podium and act like it was an accident and he was sorry and all of this bullshit that I wasn't buying into anyway. And we knew a suspension was coming, but we definitely didn't think it would be this hard of a hit because previous years, previous um, instances, the NBA just, I don't know, they're kind of scared of Draymond Green, the Warriors. Definitely scared of Draymond Green. So this was surprising to me. Um, and I would say if this was anybody else, that this is a wake-up call. And I hate to be this person because for the most part, majority of my life, majority of my mindset is positive. It's, it's always glass half full instead of half empty. There's always, if there's a will, there's always a way. I have that type of perspective. Draymond Green, his, his legacy is ruined. And it's a shame. It's a shame. This is a guy who's a champion, defensive player of the year, I think twice. Um, this is a guy who is the epitome of oh, be be a superstar, be a star in your role. He's the epitome of that. This is a guy from uh, Saginaw, Michigan, um, a guy who wasn't supposed to be where he is. He's a second-round pick. You know what I'm saying? This guy was supposed to be a tweener. This guy's a part of a dynasty, a guy that they say might have a potential statue outside of the Golden State Warriors Arena, the Chase Center. This is it's a shame. Every time his name comes up now, this is what they're going to talk about, these incidents. They're going to talk about him being that guy that did this type of stuff. It's not going to be him and the, man, remember the defensive performance he put on uh, against the, the Celtics for them to win that championship? Remember this play he made in the finals? Remember that play he made? Remember when he guarded this guy or that guy? They're not going to talk about that. You know, if Draymond Green kids do something, they have a recital, high school basketball game, a graduation. Not that he cares or that he should care. But it's disappointing that that is what people are going to talk about. And somebody looks over and realizes that's Draymond Green, Draymond Green in the room. Oh, dang, yo, isn't that the guy who... That's what they're going to say. They're not going to say, no, oh, that's the guy that won a championship. Like, no, they're not going to say that. Those days are done. And it's a shame. Before I dive into Draymond Green and, and say what I need to say on his behalf, because he's he's the most accountable, right? He is a grown man. He makes his own decisions, and he knows better, right? Plain and simple, he knows better. I think the, the, the lost thing that gets talked about here is the Golden State Warriors. Part of me feels bad for Steph Curry because he's out there still hooping at a high level and you can see the frustration starting to pile on him because his team is not good. And not only is his team not good, he's still fighting for championships. He just won one with this team not that long ago. This is the same. This For the most part, a lot of these guys are on that team. And they don't look like they're anywhere near that. And while the rest of the NBA is getting better and going towards something, they're taking steps back and back and back, and that window is closing more and more and more. And when you look at the Warriors from a long-term standpoint, it's only going to get worse. Based on how Andrew Wiggins is playing, who the hell wants that? Who is trading for that? What value does that have? Klay Thompson, the way he's playing, it looks like he's probably not going to be a Warrior next year unless he takes a significant significant pay cut Draymond Green they just paid him a hundred million dollars and chose him over Jordan Poole a young guy who does not look good in Washington at all but looked brilliant at times in the Warriors system they still have a lack of size their number two draft pick James Wiseman is no longer on this team and not only is he not on this team he don't look that damn good on his new team Kaminga shows flashes here and there. I don't think he's where they want him to be. He's, maybe it seems like he's getting there. We have a lot of time to figure that out. 
because consistency has always been a major part for that young young part of their team. Him and Moody, they show they have really strong stretches. Kaminga has really been playing really, really well. Hopefully he continues that. But this team, it just doesn't look like anything. There's no excitement or hope for this team in the future. And then on Cherry on top, Draymond Green does this type of shit. But to go to my main point, it's hard for me to really feel bad for the Warriors. Because I think they're right behind Draymond Green in responsibility. They created this monster. I'm sitting around, I'm listening to interviews from Suns players and different people on TV and the Warriors. And they're talking about Draymond finally getting some help. I'm hearing finally getting some help. What? Finally getting some help. Do y'all not know the, the track record with this shit? Why are we sitting here acting like this is a new thing? He just got off a of five game suspension. Even that right there was long overdue for the word help or really diving into this and seeing that it's an issue. The, the part for me where this was a real conversation and a real thing was when he punched his own fucking teammate in the face in a practice the year after they just won a championship. He punched his own teammate, a guy who has a thousand incidents. And I, I can't recall Draymond throwing a, a legitimate punch. He might fling his arms. He might accidentally intentionally throw a kick or or do some shit. But like full on, I am punching you in your face. I don't recall in any of these incidents. He did it to his own teammate. And now y'all are talking about help. Now y'all are talking about, man, it's a really issue. It's something deep rooted there. Are y'all fucking kidding me? All of y'all on national TV discussing this? Are y'all serious? All of y'all at the podiums with microphones in front of y'all faces talking like this is something new. Are y'all shitting me? This is horrible. Let's be real. I don't have time for the games. If y'all here, y'all getting a real today. I don't give a fuck about nobody in the NBA and how much money they make or awards they, they won. They on TV cupcaking it for y'all. I'm not here for that. Draymond Green has had an issue way before this. Deep rooted way before this. That man punched his own teammate. Don't be fooled. So I look at the Warriors as a part of this. I look at the fact anytime these incidents happen, Steve Kerr gets there on a podium with that dumbass look on his face. As if he don't know anything that's going on. Like he don't have no awareness. This is a Hall of Fame coach, y'all. A guy who's won championships as a coach and a player around some of the best minds in, in basketball history. So when shit like this happens and he gets there in a post-game interview and they ask him about it and he say, I don't know, I haven't seen. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And I ain't buying that. I'm disappointed in him. I'm disappointed in the Warriors. I'm disappointed in the old Warriors regime, the new Warriors regime. There's no accountability. Y'all are part of this fire that keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah, 80% of this, 85% of this, however much percentage y'all want to give Draymond for sure. But I'm definitely including the Warriors in this. I'm definitely including him in this. Y'all have built this shit up. Like, y'all scared of Draymond or some shit. Like, he is the reason y'all have this dynasty. He is a part of it. Steph Curry, 30, the unanimous MVP, the finals MVP, you, you know, all-time leading scorer for y'all, the best shooter we've ever seen. He's the fucking reason. It ain't because of 23. Yeah, he plays a pivotal part, an instrumental part. But if there was anybody on this fucking team, a part of the core for the dynasty that can be replaced, it would be him. You're not replacing Steph. You're not replacing Clay. You're probably not fucking replacing Kevin Durant. You can replace him. You can. And that's no slight, no disrespect, but it just shows you the magnitude of we it's levels to this shit, man. I'm exhausted if y'all can't see. I'm tired of it because it's annoying. And we sit up here and we have these same conversations. Every time Draymond do something, the same shit happens. He hits a motherfucker and, and you know, they, they, they suspend him, eject him. And we go back and forth. We talk about the history. Steve Kerr goes to the podium, act like he don't know what the fuck happened. Act like there's no history. He don't want to hold Draymond accountable as if he's just fucking terrified. Like this is the big bad wolf. 
I, I haven't seen the play. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the play. I haven't seen the play. Is it now? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's just Draymond knows how much we need him. It sucks, but yeah, I just haven't seen the play. I can't speak on it until I see the play. If you don't shut the, like, dog, that shit enrages me. It enrages me. And I, I, I heard somebody say, man, if, if you know, Steph might have to leave or something. I, re- I read it. Like, Kendrick Perkins said some shit like that. Like, man, Steph want to win. He got to leave. And at first, I'm like, come on, bro. Every time some shit ain't going right or you ain't winning a championship, that don't mean a player got to leave. But, hey, hey, I know it ain't ever going to happen. But if I was in Steph Curry's camp, if I was Steph Curry agent, I would say, hey, flirt with the idea, bro. You're going to have a statue there regardless. It, ain't, it don't mean you got to hop on somebody's bandwagon. It don't mean you got to go to the Lakers. But shit, if you ever did want to go play for your hometown, if you want, you know what I'm saying, like experiment some shit, I, I don't know. <laughs> Do it. Because the shit in Golden State, it ain't it. Klay Thompson, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not here right now. And I think he's stressed. I think he feels like I heard uh, Kendrick Perkins bringing it up on TV today. Where he's like, Klay Thompson ain't shooting the ball well, and it don't help that he's in a contract year. He probably feels a little slighted and disappointed that he's not just giving handed a check. Like, the, the Warriors are not like, hey, you know, thank you for your service. We're going to pay you one last time. They're like, no, we have to really maintain our money and look into this. This is a real de- de- decision and discussion. They gave him a two-year offer with, like, $48 million. He was probably like, really? And now he's he's been trying to prove to himself because of the injuries, and now he feels like he had to prove to the organization and all of the fans and his slump. It's really getting to him. You could tell by some of the shots. You know what I'm saying? You could tell by some of the, the body language. I love what he says, and it shows the confidence, but the, the play doesn't reflect, reflect that. Andrew Wiggins, I don't know who that is. It's not Andrew Wiggins. It's Andy Wiggins. That is Alex Wiggins. Um, Asar Wiggins. That, that's not Andrew that we're seeing out there. I have no idea who that is at all. I have no idea. And I don't see any pivot out of this. And again, because the Warriors are so scared of Draymond Green, because they're so scared of him, as if he built this shit, they gave him a $100 million contract. I don't see a way to pivot out of this. You're going to trade Draymond Green? I don't think so. You're going to trade Wiggins? To who? I don't even think the Pistons would want that shit. You going to trade Klay Thompson? No. So how do you get better? Your second overall pick? Oh, no. He plays for the Pistons. You got rid of him already. Moody or Kaminga? They're having some good stretches. Kaminga's playing a lot better, but I don't think he's at a point where he has extreme value to bring you something back. How about that Jordan Poole kid that looks so good? Oh, you already traded him. Because when Draymond punched him, according to Draymond, the chemistry was just fucked up last year. Who knows why? <laughs> Who knows why? <laughs> I, I, I I don't know. I have no idea why that would be Draymond. I I, I I couldn't think of what has transpired for that to occur. So I don't know. I don't know why the chemistry was all weird last year. You trade him for Chris Paul. <laughs> and it's just the history of it. The nip in the bud was so far back, man. They they could have nipped this in the bud so far back. Y'all were up 3-1 in the, in the finals. He got suspended because of the antics or whatever. Cool. I know they don't look at that too badly because they eventually lose that series and it opens up up the door for Kevin Durant to join, which makes this even a crazier dynasty. But why does Kevin Durant leave? It it always finds its way back to Draymond Green. And granted, I'll even cut Draymond some slack. Maybe Kevin Durant was always going to find a way to exit. Maybe he was always going to say, hey, the last chapter... I think I want to try to build something on my own. In hindsight, 2020, we know the Brooklyn thing didn't go the way that was planned. But there was definitely something in Kevin Durant that interests him enough to say, hey, Golden State belongs to Steph Curry, and that's fine. But I feel like the last part of my career, I don't I don't necessarily want to want to try to be a, a coattail. I, I, I want to see if I can go do something. And that was the intent it felt like in Brooklyn. But it's hard for me to say that Draymond Green didn't help that initiative. It's hard to think that. It really does feel like Kevin Durant could have came back, man. 
He could have. He would have. They lost to the Raptors because of the injuries. You're telling me that they don't say, hey, KD, listen, come back, man. We're not supposed to end on that note. We know we're better than the Raptors. We know we would have beat them at full health. Let's like we can't end on that note, bro. You and Clay went down. Y'all got to come back. Like, 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 let's let's do this the right way. You don't think that that they could have convinced Kevin Durant to go back? I th- I think they maybe could have. Draymond Green cursing that man out, going the way he did, crossing the line in Los Angeles in a game that didn't really mean shit in the grand scheme of things. It points back to Dray to Draymond on why Kevin Durant exited, or the real push. It points back to that. So you lose a finals, you lose an all time great player. You find your way getting back to that level. You win another championship, and one of the big figures of that was a young Jordan Poole. Basically, run him out of town, and that, and that's another year that's wasted after that. After you punch Jordan Poole, that entire year is wasted. It's not gonna win a championship with that. That was obvious. So that's a year wasted for the Warriors in their championship window. That's a year for Steph Curry in his prime. That's a wasted year of contract money and different things. And now you're forced to kind of trade this this guy who I think may have had a lot more value. If you try to trade Jordan Poole after you won the finals, you would have got back a large, large return. But he had a down year, could never find his groove because he didn't want to fucking be in a team with you. He didn't want to be in a team with you. And then you come into the podium like, it's something different this year. I don't know what was last year just was fucked up in here. What? <laughs> so we have all of these chances to nip it in the bud. When he runs Kevin Durant out of town, or if there's any indication that he could be a part of the reason, if I'm the Warriors, I'm sending him down right there. Hey, buddy, listen. I'm not sure if you know who Kevin Durant is. But you got to get it together, because I'll be damned if you run anybody else out of here. We love you, we appreciate you, and we tell you, you play a big part of this. You do. But you don't play a big enough part where you should be running anybody out of town. That is what we're not going to do. We don't want you to get confused. This shit is bigger than you. And the Warriors never did that, at least not that I know of. And if they did, it currently didn't hit Draymond. He didn't, he didn't listen to that shit. And now we have ourselves in this situation. But more importantly than anything, Draymond Green, bro, what are you doing? Seriously. Honestly, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You're a champion. You self-made second round pick. Dog, when I think about basketball around the world at all levels, to me, you're a poster child of what every young kid should be shown as a representation of basketball. Every kid should be, t- it should be two things that is introduced to them. They should be shown the Steph Curry's, the LeBron's, the Kevin Durant's, right? Like that's what you strive for. But then there's a part of everybody's basketball career where you have to accept the fact that, oh shit, I'm not a 6'8 freakish athlete. Or, you know, I'm not a 6'11 guy who can handle the ball like a two guard. You know, I'm not gifted in some of these ways. Then that's when you come up in my mind. Now I'm showing my team or my middle schoolers or my high schoolers or my AAU guys or my college guys. This is a guy who says and shows with effort, with heart, with will and desire. There is no ceilings for you as a basketball player. Draymond Green is 6'6", y'all, maybe even 6'5", power forward, defensive player of the year. He don't have a 40-inch vertical. He got a nice wingspan, but he don't have incredible speed and just a freak athlete. He don't have a bag where he's putting up gaudy numbers on the offensive end. This dude has made his name and built a legacy off sheer will. Will and knowledge. Two things that can be controlled. You can control your passion. You can control your effort. You can control how hard you play. You can control being a student of the game, you know, and and having cerebral play. Being able to dissect different things and and understand rotations and where to be and how to be a communicator and how to make reads and manipulate defenses. You can you can learn that. That is what the legacy of Draymond should be. Every player trying to make it 
in the NBA who can't be the Steph Curry and who isn't going to be LeBron James, the next best thing I'm showing them is Draymond. There's a few guys. I'm showing you Draymond. I'm showing you Fred Van Vliet. There is guys who defy the odds. Draymond Green was not supposed to be in the position he's in. You put anybody else and they have a three, four year career. And it was a guy like, hey, remember him in college? He was real good. He just didn't translate. Draymond wasn't supposed to translate. That's why he was a second round pick. He won in Michigan State. He won in Golden State. All stars. Not many all stars that can average under 10 points. Eight, eight, and, and seven. And he's an all star. And so as a fan, by default, as a fan, because I love the game of basketball and I see what you can represent for the youth. Because we did at one point, we do have too many kids trying to be Steph Curry's. They're not going to be those guys. More kids should buy into trying to be Draymond Green than trying to be fucking LeBron or Steph Curry. And that's just the harsh reality. You're not, these are generational. That word generational means something. Once in a generation. So all of these millions of people trying to be a once in a generation is stupid. More of them should look at Draymond Green. They should look at Fred Van Vliet. And there's a lot of other guys that we can sit up here and name. They, that should be you, Dre. But instead, again, not that he may care, but I know the people who love him and the people who know him and people like myself who have seen different versions of him and know that he's an intelligent black man, an entrepreneur, a champion, a self-made guy, a hard worker, sometimes charismatic I've seen on the camera. It, 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 it's, it's going to hurt for them that this is what people say when your name come up. When you go out to dinner and they find out Draymond is in the building, it's like, oh, that's that that's the guy who punched his teammate. You know, if, if you have kids and they have a recital and other parents find out that you're there, that, that's the guy who choked the, the, the one guy. Like, that's what they're going to say. That's 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 not that's that's not how it should be. That's not how it should be, man. That's not how it should be. Um, it's tough. It's tough. And I hope the NBA and the Players Association stick with what they're doing. I hope this is a long one. I really do. I don't know if it should be 25 games, but this shit should be double-digit games. And it should be made plain and clear if another incident happens with the pre- with the repercussions is going to be. They're giving them too many chances, man. If it is 25 games, I, I, won't, I probably won't even be mad at that. He's had when you think about the history of Draymond Green with this type of shit, it, it's too many to name. You're gonna forget some because he's been in so much stuff. And I just I've always said it after that finals thing where he got suspended and the Cavs came back from three one, it feels like the NBA just felt like they could not say anything to him, like they fucked up on that. No, he put himself in that position. He knew the position he was in. He he put his emotion over the team and their opportunity to win a championship, and they lost. And we still see he has not changed from that. He still puts his emotions and his feelings at that current moment over all of the most important shit. Those temporary emotions and feelings, he lets him make Permanent reactions that will never change him. He had that temporary emotion he had in that Jordan pool shit. That was temporary. He don't feel like that right now. He might, he might feel the same way towards Jordan pool, but he, he ain't as hot as about, he don't care about this shit no more, but he can't take away that punch. That's, that's a permanent reaction. How he feel wouldn't did the shit to Rudy. He probably don't fuck with Rudy, but he don't feel as mad or as angered about Rudy at that time. It changes. It's an emotion, emotions. The root word is motion. They change, they go. It's a going thing. You can have a rooted opinion on oh, fuck with him, but the emotion and feeling, you might think about him Tuesday and be mad. Wednesday come around, he not even on your fucking brain. But the decision and how you react, that's the permanent part. And Draymond made some permanent decisions. 
Um, I want to see the Warriors actually do something. This man punched Jordan Poole, and they didn't even suspend him. They fined him. Again, I said it before. It feels like Steve Kerr, unless he, unless he gets pushback and extreme, you know, conversations on Twitter, where everybody's calling him out. He's not gonna ever speak out. And I understand supporting your players, but when they are in a dead wrong time and time and time and time again, how can you just sit up there and and, and act stupid and act blind? And like I said, I feel st- sorry for Steph, but what conversations is Steph having? Are y'all hitting Draymond up and telling him, dog, you dead ass wrong? And if y'all are and he's not listening, y'all shouldn't be vouching for him to have came back. How do you reward a guy punches his teammate and you reward him with a hundred million dollars? <laughs> like, am, am I the only person that's that's looking around at this shit scratching their head? I don't know. Um, y'all let me know in the comments. We can go on and on about the Draymond Green shit. I'm sure we'll have another video whenever they come out with an actual conclusion and they say, hey, 15 games, 12 games, or he has to do this, that, and the third. We'll see. Um, The state of the Warriors, we'll probably talk about that as soon because now that they don't have him for who knows how much time, they'll probably continue to slide because they need him (laughs) a lot right now. Um, as always, I am PB the plug. Please let y'all opinions and y'all voice be heard in the comments. This is the one where I'm going to be looking a lot and seeing what y'all saying and what y'all thinking. Um, even if we all in agreement, which we probably will be, I'm still intrigued to see some of y'all thoughts and opinions. As always, I appreciate you guys. This is the PB the plug channel. I'm out. Peace.